Well, hello there, loveliest of lovelies. Hi, how are you? It's me, KP. That stands for Kevin Pereira, and you've stumbled across the streaming wasteland that is Attack of the Show presents The Loop, and I am so delighted to be joined by two superhuman beings today. Of course, Vanessa G, super producer, is with us as always. And joining us today to talk tech and some of our favorite gadgets of this year, uh, a very unconventional convention that is CES 2022. We've got Ashley Escada, senior producer for CNET. And uh, it says in quotes, Ashley, internet weirdo? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's definitely me. Okay. That seems, like <laughs> <laughs> that seems right. Did it, it seem to miss a beat on that one? And it feels right. And I, I'm delighted that you're joining us, especially uh, in, in, in this week of weeks. In these unprecedented times, we have yet another unprecedented week to cover all things CES, uh, which I want to dive into. But I got to do a little housekeeping first. I have to put on my professional cap for half a second and officially welcome everybody. I see your scrolling chats, your messages, uh, your emoji versions of me as a weird hot dog, because that's a thing now on the internet. <laughs> But thank you. I hate it and I love it simultaneously, <laughs> like most things in this world. Uh, so Twitch, YouTube, I see you. If at any point you have a question or a comment and you want super producer Vanessa G to receive it, exclamation point Q, followed by anything. There's there's Vanessa right there. there she will receive it. She will manifest it. She will deliver it. And the show will keep chug, chug, chugging along just like the hype train that we have going right now on the uh, the Twitch side of things. So thank you so much. Uh, just to clarify, hot dog is a taco, not a sandwich. I'm not going to bog us down with that today because we know it's an emotional topic. And Ashley, yeah. I would ask your take, but I worry about opening the floodgates. Um, no, I, you know what? I don't want to start any wars, okay? Like, I don't want to, <laughs> I'm not here to, not here to tip the boat over. Maybe rock it a little bit. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, be the Switzerland in the food discussion. Yeah. You don't have to weigh in, but the hinge does in fact make it a taco, not a sandwich. That's fine. How are you, <laughs> Ashley? How is your week? How is your pandemic? Are you thriving? Are you juiced? Are you boosted? Tell us everything. Uh, all of the, all of the above. Let's just say yes <laughs> to all of it. Uh, I am pandemically thriving, pandemically thriving, which I guess is like, not great in the normal world, but in pandemic world, good. Sure. So yeah, and the, um, things, are, things are good. Those upside down or gray that we sort of exist in, I'm glad that you're eking out thriving. That is fantastic. Yeah. And uh, it's to CES, hear. And which is exciting. I Look, I look forward to it each and every year. And I thought this year, uh, you know, going into the holiday break, I thought it was a little questionable as to what sort of a convention we would get. And we, we got one. Uh, albeit with some surprise restrictions and uh, a bit of a limited time frame, um, mm -hmm. so that Omicron, I mean, Omicron's not going to show up to your party if it's a day shorter. And the, the CES no. wizards figured that out. No, I mean, Vegas, notable for being one of the cleanest cities on earth, um, <laughs> yes. I think is, you know, no Omicron there. No way. No, how? no, no, it is. It's, it's certainly not a, a Petri dish. Nope. Not at all. It's not, it's not the ashtray no. of the country. No, it's a beautiful place <laughs> that's packed with a delightful amount of technology, which we're privileged to be covering from home, which, you know, I know that there's a certain energy that permeates any convention whenever you get like-minded folk together. But do you think that the, the Omicron of it all has, has proven to be uh, an extremely wet blanket for the convention? Or do you feel like information is coming out and people are still excited? I think a, a lot of the companies were very prepared for this, right? So they they said, oh, yeah, we're going to all do CES. It's going to be great. But I think in the back of their minds, you, you got to have a contingency plan, especially with these massive corporations who are making these huge announcements that really affect their bottom lines and their shareholders. So I think, uh, you know, there was always a looming specter of what happens if. And so I think once... That Delta variant like came in in late summer, early fall. I think you know all these companies were like, "Hey, maybe we should just re pre-record some stuff just in case. Like, let's just be prepared." Uh, and then you know, once the dominoes started falling, once companies started pulling out of the show, it really just you know, it, it, it is a little bit of a wet blanket for any of the smaller vendors that actually do need to go to Vegas, like to stay right. in business or to sell their product, like. It's terrible for them. And so we try to kind of go out of our way to find, you know, find those companies as well as cover the really big ones. 
Yeah, that's right. That's a, that's a, 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 actually a perfect point because it's easy to get swept up into the big Nvidia pressers or the Samsungs and LGs of it all, but there are uh, more mom and pop size uh, uh, creators out there that are invested heavily in getting booth space, setting up the hotel room, doing the demos, you know, uh, yeah. I, I hate the term pressing the flesh, especially in this day and age, but let's just say whatever the socially distance appropriate version of that phrase is, there, there is, um, that's fine. Yeah. Waving, bowing from afar, whatever that. Tipping the, the, your hat. Never has it been more socially acceptable to tip your fedora at somebody. Never that's right. has it ever. Well, so I do want to, my lady, the, the CES of it all, because despite the presence of a somewhat damp blanket, there are plenty of announcements. There's a ton of tech. And so over the next uh, hour and change, uh, if, you, if everyone will indulge, including you, Ashley, we're going to uh, discuss everything from uh, Sony's uh, push uh, even further into the virtual reality realms. We're going to talk new EV concepts and actual cars you'll be able to, well, pre-order today and drive maybe in 2024 with the chip shortage. I hate when yeah. I hit that octave. Um, yeah. So we've got yeah, all maybe. sorts of tech. We've got foldables. We've got TVs. We've got everything. But I wanted to start with a little bit of a hodgepodge, and I had I have to let you kick it off because... Uh, because there's a note in one of my documents that I've never seen before. I thought maybe Vanessa was trying to play wordly today and got a little messed up because uh, it says uh, Amagami Ham Ham. Yes, it does. And I was concerned that, me oh, okay, that's... <laughs> I have not. <laughs> could you have ever, wait, let me just ask you, this. could you have ever in your wildest imagination guessed that that, that was what you were going to see? Oh, you know, my 2022 bingo card didn't have, um, you know, influencers doing things with jars that they can no longer do. And that was a oh, surprise so yesterday. I didn't think I would have whatever this is on the screen. Someone in chat just already screams, I will buy 10. So see? maybe you see? could shed yeah, a little light. I'm gonna. I'm reading the headline now in real time. I didn't even realize there was a headline on it because I was stuck on the photo. But <laughs> is it just a robot that nibbles your finger? And I don't mm -hmm. mean to reduce it to just a. But please, Ashley, what is this? Oh no, that's 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 exactly what it is. It is in fact a robot that chews on your finger <laughs> and makes things weird. Makes it weird. That's what is that's it? it. That's what it. I that's what it does. Oh, no, and there. Has, I mean, welcome to CES twenty. Welcome to CES 2022, everybody. Vanessa, what was that? Were you throwing out a tech spec for this thing or? It has one tech spec. Uh, it has two, two dozen play biting patterns. Oh no. That's oh the no. That's the spec. It, it's a. It's, oh, it so there's like a, there's just like a motor in it that can uh, that differentiate haptically between the nibble and the bite or mm -hmm. the suckle mm -hmm. or the whatever it is, this latest in suckle yeah. tech. And you insert finger, it detects it. And like a, 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 like a carnivorous Teddy Ruxpin, I guess, it will just sort of go to town on your digit and that's it. And that's comforting. Okay. But also imagine it in five nights at Freddy's. <laughs> <laughs> in VR. Like there's, the possibilities are truly endless. Uh, call saying. me Aurelius says that's two, do that's two more dozen than it needs. And I think that's in reference to the suckle patterns so that right. it has. So and I also, right. yeah, I hate that. I, uh, this, I've, I've used company, my quota the of the word suckle for 2022, please, Ashley. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm very glad that you've hit that quota early. <laughs> just get it. Just get it right out of the way. Um, this company also years ago introduced a, um, a, a, a cushion with a tail at CES. <laughs> It's the only way I can describe it. I'm sorry. <laughs> now. You did that. So it's like a, a pillow that would wag its tail like excitedly if you hugged it or. Yeah, it was like <gasps> it was kind of breathing ish. It was very weird. Um, Vanessa yeah. just inhale squeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, that's I. Are you looking at it right now, Vanessa? Because Cubo, the petite Cubo. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to load it. Cubo. See if I can. The like Q O O quick. B O, I think. I didn't expect it to be so hairy. It's, it's the Kubo pet pillow. Um, a, lot of great pull, a lot of great pull quotes happening just so early. A, uh, a early tailed cushion that heals your heart. Do you need your heart so healed? The instru I, I didn't. Do yeah, I do. I do. And I didn't. I mean, I've, I've gone to Peru. I've done the ayahuasca ceremony. That didn't work. Maybe what I needed was, was a, 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 a cat pillow. pillow 
or a raccoon that would suckle on my finger. All right, let's let's move on. No, we're good. We're good. We're moving on. Let's talk moon bikes for the wannabe Bond villains out there. These are yeah, so this cool. Is, this is incredible. So tell me everything, please. Okay. I talked to the CEO of Moon Bikes yesterday and I got just the full lowdown. So this is an electric snow bike. So it is an electric snow bike. It's like the screen says 8,500 bucks, um, which seems pricey, but also, you know, if you're out in the snow all the time and you- Yeah, you're getting a, little, a tread little, based- all terrainish vehicle. Villain. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it, yeah. Was the CEO the, did, was the CEO was. petting like that? Was the was the CEO petting a hairless cat pillow? Like the tail yeah. would wag, but there was clearly no fur yeah. on it. It also it bit him at least three times during our interview. <laughs> it was very awkward. That's a suckle pattern. That's not an attack. Um, it's very, but yeah, I love no. that. Yeah, the price point is interesting, cool. but you're talking about a vehicle that is, you know, weather resistant, that can be, I'm assuming, driven fairly hard in very cold climates. And it's yeah. you said it was fully electric, right? So gone are the days yeah. of hearing the grinding generator noise That's as you're tearing big, that was through a the big mountain. Thing. It's like you're not disturbing nature as you're riding through you know at least not audibly <laughs> at least not audibly you're just seeing a car <laughs> just like destroying everything on the ground um <laughs> but uh but yeah this is like really fascinating and so he talked about how you know they they have tested it it's really great and this is one of those products where normally at ces like we've we've talked about this like at ces everything is concepts or it's, it's five years away or, it, you know, it's just, right. there's so many things that end up being vaporware or take, you know, a decade. There's that foldy mate, which was the laundry folding robot. That thing took almost 10 years, I think, to make it to market. And so, you know, this is a thing that is shipping literally right now to pre-orders and then we'll ship, you know, in February to people order it now. So um, I love that. That's always one of my favorite types of products to see at CES, which it's like, hey, here's the US launch. It's available. You can buy it. Here you go. Um, and so, yeah, this is like really fascinating. They're talking about how they want to build an app. They want to do all of these other, uh, you know, initiatives with it over time. They want to keep iterating on it, making it better. You have the batteries removable, so you don't have to worry about it, you know, getting really cold and, and kind of losing a lot of that preconditioning that you would want to do on, say, a Tesla or another EV. Um, so it's, uh, it's pretty cool and it has two batteries and it's uh, very lightweight. It's easy to assemble uh, and, it's uh, it's it's just you know we don't have any snow here in LA because um, we live in Mad Max, but uh, for, for I'm sure it'll ride on dust snow, as well. <laughs> I actually, you know, we I can, actually asked we can drive about it on desert. our rivers and our lake beds. Oh yeah, and I asked about desert. I, I specifically said, hey, like what about sand? Because we're not going to have water here. So help me. Like, when is this going to be available? And he said, well, that would be like a really long ways out, but that's interesting. And they said a lot more people obviously are out there snowmobiling as opposed to, because you know, they have, right. I want to see like an, an ATV, you know, a go electric. Where's that? I'm with you so, during uh, the resource wars. I want to be on one of these as I fight Nestle tooth and yeah, nail for every for, ounce for of water. well water. That's right. <laughs> that's right. that's the ground. Right. We're going to do it. Uh, Gonzo563 doing the, the the Lord's work in the Twitch chat uh, pointed out that it has a 1.5 hour or three hour max range, depending upon the battery configuration that you get. Uh, and also yeah. that the top speed is 26 miles per hour. So like, even if you're like, you know, hearing about this, that's pretty decent. That's pretty fast. It sounds dangerous enough. I'm sure I could find <laughs> ways to fracture all of the bones in my old body or get concussed six different ways with it. But you know, even if you're not one of those, like, well, I don't live in a cold weather climate like, like us or a lot of the folks in the country as a rental, you know, a lot of people so didn't fun. purchase segways, but so many rented them and strapped on a helmet and did the tours in their areas. And I bet a lot of people will be riding those in cold weather climates for right. vacations to come. Yeah. yeah. You're just going to see a whole bay of them at like a mammoth resort, just waiting for people to rent and like take out for the day. That's right. Yeah, you're going to be, uh, you'll be, you'll be in uh, Colorado and they'll just be littering the streets kind of like lime scooters. Do I want yeah, to hop on one? I guess, Comic-Con, okay. They'll just yes. be everywhere. <laughs> they'll just be all over the place. You just pick one up and ride away on it. It'll be awesome. Um, we have to uh, appease the corporate overlords. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Ashley, we're hanging out and talking PSVR 2 in a minute. Is that a cool? Sounds great. I love it. Chat, you stay there and keep doing everything you're doing. Exclamation point Q followed by questions and comments. We will get to all of them later in the show. This is Attack of the Show presents The Loom. See you in a second. 
Hello there, friends. Welcome back to Attack of the Show presents The Loop. I am Kevin Pereira, and it's a pleasure to have you all here. Uh, major thanks to everybody uh, on the Twitch side of things for a successful hype train. We appreciate it. YouTube chat, I see you as well. It's always a delight to have each and every one of you here. And don't forget, uh, you are the air that we breathe. You are our, our precious mana, our nectar. You are the, uh, the goo that lubricates the joints. You're the fire. You're the... the you're the, the the cheesy stuffing in our crust. You're, uh, Vanessa, help me. What I'm trying to say is that it's important that they follow and subscribe and like and do the thumbs up and hit the and bell. Hit all those bells and that's uh, right. Interact in chat and keep that that's the, hype train going, no matter how much it scares <laughs> Kevin because he thinks it's a real train sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I think I'm a damsel strapped to the tracks when that sub train comes chugging along. But seriously, uh, do all of the engagement things. That really helps us out. Please follow, subscribe, like, d elbow, drop the bell, and tell 10 friends because that's how we grow this, this thing. It is a game of inches. Yes, I'm, I'm full clap. Um, clap if you believe. Thank you all so much for everything. That is Vanessa G, super producer, who's here with us today. Uh, exclamation point Q, followed by any questions or comments. The, those will make their way to her control panel, and she, like Oz behind the curtain, will uh, summon them into existence for us to chat with. And who's the us today? Well, I am irrelevant, but Ashley Escada, who is the senior producer for CNET. She is Hello. here today Hello. to chat all things CES. And, and last we left, we promised them, Ashley, that we would discuss PSVR 2. So shall we? Oh, so excited. So yeah, excited. Right. Beyond excited. I, I, you know, PSVR was like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of a... Ooh, yeah. And they, was, they italicized that yeah. pull quote on the box. It was Ashley says it's... With a question. Fine? Yeah. Uh, you know, I will say this about the original PlayStation VR like, that I agree with you. I thought it was fine. And knowing it was like, I don't want to say Fisher cobbled Price, together, like Baby's My like First VR, but together sort of. Yeah. They were, the PS4 was not really like specifically designed for virtual reality headset. And then Oculus right. and HTC came out with their headsets and PlayStation was like, oh, we better do something. Um, and so, yeah, we ended up with, I, <laughs> do you remember when the PlayStation 5 launched, there was a, um, a ton of really expensive PS4 cameras on like eBay. People were going yeah. insane thinking we were going to need them. So fortunately, PSVR 2, not the case. Not That's right. And you're right. Yeah, the Move cameras. There was a run on those, and the um, the actual the Move uh, controllers, the ones with the little light up, the, little ice <laughs> the, cream the clown scoops. noses on the end. Yeah. Ice creams. So yeah, the first the, the first foray into VR was a little cobbled together because you're right. PS4 wasn't necessarily designed for that. That's why there was 13 different cables, and you know the headset was oh, the a little on the, the worst wonky side. But what Sony really did do was, I think, two things. One, um, you know, they learned a lot. They gathered a ton of data about, you know, what people expect out of the hardware, what's working, what isn't. Uh, obviously, on the software side of things, they gathered a metric ton of data about who's playing what. But Sony also proved that software will move units. Like, as someone who yeah. had the Vive and had the Oculus and had a bunch of other setups that were, you know, from a, a pure hardware standpoint, much better than the original PSVR, I still got the PlayStation headset because there were exclusive experiences that I could only get on that device. Psych now looking at the PlayStation 5. Oh yeah. What's that? Oh. It, the Rhombus of Ruin. I, that's my I like yes! I that was the reason I bought it. 100% same. <laughs> Vanessa, Vanessa. Sorry. Come Rhombus on. of Ruin. Come I Okay, wait, let me. Let's, uh let's nope. Go. nope. It's this one. Okay, it's it's, it's that it's okay. it's that it, that way. Uh, yep. Uh, we're high-fiving uh, right. Oh, no, nope, it's this way. <laughs> I did. Where wait. am I going? This way. Yep, Who needs in human right connection, right? Look yeah, at, and this is the it. argument for we VR, I think, as well. <laughs> no, that game is why I bought VR. It's every single adaptation to like make the psychic powers make you feel like you're essentially Magneto or an X-Men. Yes. The uh, integration of it and like it doesn't actually make you motion sick because of the travel that it uses. It's kind of like yeah. a perfect introduction to VR game. It was good. And also, yeah, see Resident Evil 7, so good. Like Chris Dugan right. say, like, it's so, so good. Like I thought so many of the experiences in VR for PSVR were like really fun uh, and also okay. uh, did not make me ill, which was, uh, that was a real boon for me and my enjoyment of PSVR. Yeah, so when I look at you know PSVR 2 and I see the hardware specs for the device itself, uh, it's very impressive, which we could talk about uh, really quickly. And then obviously there was a, a little teaser 
of some new Horizon gameplay that's a, a oh, VR that exclusive so cool. as well. But let's so let's talk about the headset for a second here. We're talking 4K HDR displays, 110 degree field of view, which is bigger than the Quest 2. Now, again, mm-hmm. Quest 2 is fully standalone. It does not require something else. This PSVR 2 still requires that you have a PlayStation 5. Tough a to cable. get for some. Yeah. And a cable. That's not right. Not going to be easy. And a cable. That's right. And you need the cable. But gone is the separate camera for tracking. We've got inside out tracking oh. just like the, the Quest provides, which is great. Um, and they've even got some interesting stuff. So the new, uh, they have uh, their own version of a controller, which is, it looks Oculus esque uh, from what I can see there. But they've added. Yeah, so it's cir- kind of circular uh, PSVR 2 sense controllers. They look amazing. And also, I really do enjoy that they, uh, they don't seem to need like wrist straps. straps. They don't, that doesn't seem like a thing that you're going to need, which is very nice. Like you just grab them. You don't have to like fiddle with Mm -hmm. the wrist straps or whatever. Just pick them up, use them. Seems really good. Yeah. I wonder, I was looking at the renders and wondering, did they leave them out purposefully or because, you know, part of being in VR is obviously, you know, grabbing and throwing. There's a big, that every demo involves throwing of something. Throwing And that's usually when the wrist strap will grab your throw or the OLED TV set will grab it and shatter because you didn't have something securing it to your hand. So I wonder how they're going to solve that. That would be interesting. Yeah. I think that's a, maybe they just didn't want to show them because they like don't photograph well or the renders. They just said, no, just leave leave those off. Yeah, the future requires safety mechanisms. But uh, the displays are 2000 by 2040 per eye. They confirm 90 to 120 hertz refresh rate. All that is great. They also mentioned that um, it's got eye tracking and uh, foveated rendering, foveated, which is Yeah, foveated rendering. Cool. Big deal. Big deal. Huge deal. Should we, do you, you, if you want to break down foveated rendering, I would love for you to do that before I accidentally say Zelda is the one that's throwing uh, the I was going to say, I will not, get... sir, okay. <laughs> um, because I don't build these things for a living. I just use them. Okay, so here's my, and, and internet, feel free to get your tomato cannons ready or put on your wrist straps before you throw your virtual tomatoes. Foveated rendering yeah, is a big deal because what it does is it, 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 it puts processing power, rendering power at the areas of the screen or screens in this case, because it's VR, that you're actually focused on, that you're looking at. Um, you know, if you don't have eye tracking, it's usually just dead center because that's where your eyes see more clear. And then when the periphery goes, you know, things get a little blurry. You don't need anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering and all these bells and whistles and whatnot to be in the periphery because your eyes can't really perceive it anyway. So with foveated rendering, I believe it's expending the processing power on what you're focused on the most. And so what that means is that you're going to eke more performance out of your games. And as we know in VR, because we mentioned VR and we talk about how the the times that we don't get sick, those are the glowing experiences. So any extra frame per second that we can get out of the experience with it looking good equals uh, you know, less purge uh, and better looking games. Yeah. I think and that honestly, was... And honestly, like, the, the motion sickness stuff is so much less terrible than it was and uh, even a short generation ago. It, like, the original, you know, Rift, the Oculus Rift and the, the original HTC Vive, PSVR, like, they had some challenges to overcome when it came Mm -hmm. to certain and also developers were still kind of learning the medium in some ways. And so you would play kind of, you'd kind of play something that was small. It was a short experience, but then you, you know, there was something in there that would just kind of set off your brain to make it go, that is not right. And now I don't feel great or I have a headache. I know a big one for most people's headaches. That's like, I know that that's a thing that a lot of people experience when they're getting used to virtual reality. That's like right. they, they tend to experience kind of that, that headache experience while they're kind of adjusting to the, adjusting to the metaverse, if you will. <laughs> yeah, the metaverse, it's going to be nauseating at first, but then we'll all pour sweet baby rays on it and we'll be fine. Yeah, um, yeah. I, fine. I know we, we, we have a commercial break to take, but I did want to just show a second of this horizon footage because we we teased it. Oh, it looks so, so good. So um, let's pull the break beats out for a second and just <laughs> just show a little. It's a very quick teaser. They had it at the, the, the presser last night. So just imagine this in HDR. Can we cut to it or do I need to stop talking? I think we can cut to it. I think we have the technology or the power. I think we can get to it. We can get to it. We do. Um, So imagine this. HDR, 4K, OLED screens. Hello, world. Oh, look at the long neck. Oh. 
and this thing will be tracking your eyes in real time and there's 3D audio technology in there as well and apparently there's haptic feedback in the headset so the goggles themselves can vibrate on your face when a future robot steps on your noggin it's cuz finally my dreams of Lady Dimitrescu can s- literally step on my neck. Like, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's a crush it's a fantasy come day. true for everyone. <laughs> if Let me tell you, if they don't make a DLC, you're missing out. You're just leaving yeah. money on the table. You're just leaving you're money on the up table. NVIDIA's Omniverse and make a mod that's going to get you banned from the internet, Ashley, I can tell. A hundred percent. When we come back, friends, we will actually talk a little bit about the Omniverse, but we got to dive into Google's announcement because now Google's taking shots across Apple's bow, apparently. So get ready, fanboys. It's time to squabble. We've got more CES uh, with Ashley and Vanessa G. When we come back, this is Attack of the Show presents The Loop. Hello, dearest friends and frenemies. It's me, Kevin Pereira, and you have found yourself smack dab in the middle of Attack of the Show Presents The Loop. I'm joined by Vanessa G, super producer, as always, and Ashley Escada from CNET joins me to talk all about CES and this socially distanced, pandemic-friendly Omicron edition (laughs) of all the things you need to know coming out of CES. (laughs) And uh, I want to take a quick second to shout out everybody on the Twitch chat and the YouTube chat. I see you lovely scrolling in real time. If we can get an F in chat uh, from both for the fantastic stream that we have, I'd love to just see a C of those Fs scrolling by. Uh, And I know that uh, makes analytics cringe every time I do that, which is why I do it. (laughs) Uh, also, exclamation point Q, followed by any questions or comments you have. Uh, that's how you get it noticed by Vanessa G. And later on in the show, we will get to all of those questions and comments. But right now, we've got to get back to more game discussion. Uh, we just chatted briefly about the PSVR 2. But, um, you know, one of those stealthy technologies that I think people like to laugh at at first because it was, you know, it's baby steps. You know, we would laugh at, 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 at broadband gaming if we were still looking at it in terms of dial-up. But I'm talking about game streaming services. Namely, mm-hmm. uh, we have NVIDIA's GeForce uh, Now, GeForce Go. GeForce Now. GeForce Now. Sorry. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. NVIDIA's GeForce Now. There's a GeForce lot of Go Now. now. Uh, there there's was just Shield so many. For a second there, they had a device called the Shield, and I think they were trying to do Shield gaming. But regardless, they've got, from all intents and purposes, a, a fairly rock solid streaming off offering. And, and Google, of course, has Stadia as well. And, yep. you know, the notion of buying dedicated hardware to get into these ecosystems was interesting and cumbersome and laughable to some. However, Samsung had a big announcement that they're bundling it directly in with their sets in the Samsung gaming hub. And I think we should we should touch on that, Ashley. We should. This is really interesting. So Samsung showed off a whole bunch of new new screens, new TVs. I mean, all kinds of stuff. And uh, one of which was this stunning Odyssey Arc it's like a 51 or 52 inch monitor and you can rotate it vertical and it's it looks like a cockpit it's incredible um so they're doing this gaming hub where on the tv you're going to be able to access google stadia and geforce now and all of these game streaming services uh straight through your tv without any box required and so this Mm -hmm. is kind of uh you know a lot of this, I like. I hate to use the phrase like it's the future of gaming, but really, so many of these, so many of these concepts and services are are in fact the fu- the future. They're the future of gaming, and um, it's it's very interesting to me. No, I you know I agree, and I it's it's and I can see the you know the mixed reactions, which are fairly expected from chat scrolling in here about like, hey, very it, why would I ever want to do this or have this? But I do think there 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 may come a time. In the, in the nearest future where it's laughable that every box uh, and every smartphone has dedicated GPUs and CPUs and RAM and hard drive space when we do hit a time and maybe it's 6G or dare I live long enough to see 10G. I don't know what sort of connectivity is going to be required, but streaming, the latency is getting better. The stream mm-hmm. quality is improving. And there, you know, the moment you receive a console into your living room, that hardware is, I'm sorry to say it's already dated, you know, and, and PC gamers right. know that and feel that intrinsically, right? Like the, the graphics card you have is not as good as the one that's going to be announced tomorrow. So the promise of cloud gaming where it can really excel is 
hey, you don't even have hardware to upgrade. And now that you're just going to be mm-hmm. buying a TV anyway, you know, there's going to be a lot of people upgrading. When you turn on that Samsung TV in the living room, it might not be, oh, now I need to fight the robots to try to get a PS5 or a Series X. <laughs> right. I'm just going to press the button and play the game and it's going to look well enough and stream well enough on one of these services that are built into the TV. Yeah, this is... So one of the predictions that I made before the Xbox Series S and the S was announced, um, the S in particular, I thought that Microsoft might make a Game Pass set-top box, which was basically mm-hmm. su- subscription-only, Game Pass only, 99 bucks, uh, you know, you plug it in and then you just have access, <clears throat> excuse me, you have access to all of Game Pass um, without needing to buy an expensive piece of hardware if that's not what you're interested in, right? So it's like the S is an awesome little console. I love it. Um, and, you know, I have lots of friends who are like, no, I must have the Series X and like respect. I get it. I literally built out a computer this year that has a 3080 in it. I I like having super nice graphics and, and all that stuff and cutting edge technology. I was going to say, um, how but, are your crypto mining efforts? Are you uh, oh, it's great, yeah. <laughs> rich in Ethereum and Doge? Please mint, <laughs> mint some NFTs. Um, but yes, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting that I think in the future we may still see consoles uh, because people like physical media and they like having a physical device. But then I also think that, uh, you know, I also think that we're going to see these kind of small streaming set-top boxes and we're going to see stuff like this where, you know, we saw this happen with movies first, which, you know, we used to all have DVD players that were separate from our consoles and we used to have physical media and we used to have all of those things. And now, you know, we stream everything and music is the same. And so, you know, video games is inevitably going to go in the same direction and um, it might, it might take a little bit longer, you know, because of the hardware aspect of it. But I think that overall, you know, we'll get there. It's just, you know, an infrastructure problem. Like you said, we, I don't know. I don't know what the tipping point is on how much of the globe is going to need really good internet service uh, or good enough internet service to be able to make that a possibility that is profitable. Um, But it's, uh, it's an interesting technology. And I think Samsung, is going in the right direction and it was inevitable. I think so too. I think that you're right that a lot of stars need to align the, the, the broadband component, the hardware costs, if you're, they're bundling it with a set top box, there's a lot that needs to be figured out and it's not going to be ready for everyone day one. But, you know, broadband gaming wasn't that way. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of technology that isn't ready for the masses day one. But I think uh, an inevitability is the right way to describe it. And I think the best case scenario for the keeping a console in your living room gets left in the dust for the best case scenario when those games are on demand and upgraded overnight and there's no downloading updates and right. you know game worlds and experiences can just get bigger and better um, but yeah. let's 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 assume that we're still going to be in a world where people have consoles and PCs and they're cobbling it together why not and I, look I, I don't want to be presumptuous about your setup Ashley you have a far nicer streaming setup than I do but I don't know if you can see that back there that is a well, that is a desk that I had to assemble with an Allen wrench and it came from a store that flat packs them, but they're not a sponsor. And I have a, a matching desk here and I've got my PC beneath it and a bunch of components on top of it. Why not? And this is me playing 40 chess. Why not make the desk a computer? There are computer desks that exist. Not, no, no, but Ash, not, Ash, Ashley, but not no. like, but not like this. But not like this. Not like, <laughs> not like Razor put out this concept. It's a pretty amazing thing here. This Project is, uh, Sophia has Project arrived. Sophia. And it's, look at these conceptual stills that we have of Project Sophia. What is that? A futuristic turntable for a cat DJ in cyberspace? Is that a yes. metaverse mixtape being made? Nope. It's a modular PC desk solution where you can a, it's a hollow desk right like this is the thing that i think of it's <laughs> yes. like star trek it's like yes. a very hollow yeah. why don't they just call it the hollow desk that's oh, i would buy a, it yeah no disrespect to the sophias of the world but that is a much cooler concept name for sure the but hollow desk come on that is the idea uh behind the uh, project sophia gaming entertainment 
razor desk thing, which is basically you've got a bunch of modular components that you can hot swap for your needs. So do you want yeah. uh, you know, an extra GPU? Cool. A tablet. Pop open a, yeah, yeah. A, a drawing sure. tablet. Do you want uh, like a wireless charger? Do you want something to heat up your coffee mug? Great. Are you a streamer and do you need an audio mixer or a ring light? Yeah. Um, like Elgato makes a, made a module you for your, that's your stream deck module. You just pop that right in your desk. That's right. So the idea is as long as the architecture itself, which connects these devices, does it need to be radically improved over time, which maybe it does, but take that aside. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could just, you know, <laughs> plug and play different hot swappable things. And the Project Sophia concept has a massive 65 or 77 inch display, which can rise up from the uh, from the desk. At least it appears yeah. to from the renderings. It comes so it's yeah, all yeah. set it's there. Like really terribly interesting, all kind of one piece. It's like incredible. So I know like CES is a celebration of vaporware. It is a celebration of whimsy, but like I, that's Indeed. how I felt about the, the Zephyr mask that they showed off last year, which they made. And now there's a Zephyr Pro, which they showed off in case you want yeah. to RGB up you know, the filtration of your air. So I, I, how do you feel about Sophia and... How do you feel about Razer's ability to show off concept art and deliver? I mean, there, look, Razer is, there's no one better at showing off concept art than, than Razer, uh, concept <laughs> renders, and uh, and putting out really crazy products at CES and showing off, you know, sometimes they actually have like working prototypes, which is amazing. Uh, but, uh, and, and like you said, you know, Project Zephyr is now this this face mask and they're now going to do a pro version of it where it has amplified uh, voice module, like a module for voice amplification so people can actually hear you when you talk inside the mask. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is, you know, like you said, CES is a celebration of vaporware. And I think this idea is very interesting in concept, but we've, a we've also seen this idea try to get executed with phones already. Right. And it hasn't worked. And s the problem is, is, you know, you would have to get so many third-party manufacturers on board to like create these modules that it doesn't really it doesn't really work out usually over time now now could we see something come of this concept that ends up being something really cool in the future sure like this is where this is why we have concept stuff it's so that you can figure out like hey this is a really interesting thing people love it they're excited about it how can we make this reality how can we adjust this uh how can we you know how can we figure out a way to make this reality in a way that works for us as a company so i think it's possible that we might see maybe uh, a modular pad that you put on your desk like that could be really cool or we might see um, sort of an accessory or something like that, but I don't know that we'll see this whole desk. I don't know that that, that would ever become a reality. I, I couldn't agree more, Ashley, but when we talk about uh, the celebration of vaporware and it's easy to, to, to wag a finger at the gaming industry, but if we're going to point at any <laughs> industry that wears the crown for touting concepts that may or may not ever be, it's the automotive industry. So when we come back, we're going to talk about the, the new Silverado, which I don't believe is vaporware. You can pre-order it today. We're going to talk about Sony's <laughs> auto initiatives. We've got NVIDIA in the mix as well. And of course, BMW has a color changing car. Trust me, some of this is going to make sense. And some of this you'll actually have in your driveway. Most of it probably not, but we'll get into that when we come back to the loop. Well, hello there, friends. Welcome back to Attack of the Show presents The Loop. It's me, TV's Devin Panera. Uh, is this, this is on TV, right? Great. Perfect. Uh, we are chatting CES and I'm joined by CNET's Ashley Escada and of course, uh, Vanessa G. This super is on producer, TV, is what? Today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, this ends up on linear. Yeah. Oh, Everything no. we say, oh, no. believe it or not. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, sorry uh, to all of you watching on a television. So sorry. Ashley, we'll get him in the second half. Don't worry. This is it's a game okay. of inches here. <laughs> this is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> um, we have been uh, deep diving through uh, all of the, the leftovers in the wasteland that is CES 2020, the, the somewhat scuffed but somewhat delightful celebration of tech in this gesturing broadly at the world. At the moment, we're making the best. This is digital lemonade out of the announcements that are there. And this morning, we are. I was actually pleasantly surprised to see what GM announced because I'm glad that we're getting away from uh, uh, from the ICE engines of the world. I know that's uh, redundant to say engine at the end of that, but 
Let's get to the EV revolution. Let's get some cleaner vehicles on the street. And GM announced the new Silverado. Hashtag not an ad, but they did, right? This is a, this is a real they thing did. that we can maybe get and get our hands on a steering wheel in the coming years. That, yes. And it's gorgeous. I like, it's really nice. I, I really like it. Um, and the specs on this thing are very impressive. They're saying over 400 miles of range. They're, yeah. uh, you know, they're they're talking about how it's going to, you know, get updated a lot. They're going to uh, have over 660 horsepower, which is like pretty good, better than the Ford F-150 Lightning, which is um, pretty awesome. And um, 780 pounds. Uh, there, there, there. There's a lot of stuff. I'm not no, yeah, a car person. 780 pounds, so, no, foot pounds of torque, which is... Foot pounds uh, of that, torque. That's, that's the that word I was the, looking for. Couldn't remember what a, the... I remembered the number and torque. I couldn't remember <laughs> foot pounds. <laughs> but for those Sorry, that need to know that spec... Person. No, they got it. They totally got it. I should not be... I am not the automotive expert by any stretch. I do happen to drive a truck at the moment. And one of the things that I said, and I love my vehicle. I love it to pieces in a way that a human being probably shouldn't love. A, a, a something, you know, a material object. I do love it, but I, you know, I do wish it didn't consume dinosaur juice. I wish it didn't run off yeah. diesel. And, you know, these, this is the, the gen one of trucks that we're starting to see come out that are EV trucks and the specs on them are pretty darn decent for, uh, you know, for your towing, for your payload capacity, for your ability to power tools on the work site or, you know, if, uh, a, a Bluetooth speaker around the campground, if you're me, um, I, I, it's pretty impressive. But the first thing you said was the first thing that I saw, thought, which was, it's really pretty. Like, I saw it's that really the vehicle pretty. drive out of stage, and I saw, yeah, I saw the footage of the truck, and oh. I was like, that's a damn pretty vehicle. <laughs> it's really nice sometimes, looking. Sometimes, sometimes with EVs, we have these, like, weird bubble yes. cars. They're very, yes. and I, I totally understand they want it to look like the Jetsons, like it's very futuristic, or it looks like it's out of Minority Report, but it doesn't look like it belongs in the real world. And so I feel like this is a truck that looks like a tr truck, like a mm -hmm. good, strong truck, but also looks cool and looks futuristic. It's a really nice kind of blend of those things. And I think, you know, as I see uh, the, the, the Ford's electric F-150 and I see GM Silverado here, you, you got to hand it still to, to Tesla for defining a lot of the UX and UI, the, the design of these vehicles. Because when I saw the, like the Silverado's uh, cluster nav screen that kind of merges into the entertainment system on the dash and the widescreen mm -hmm. aspect ratio, and the fact that an automaker is touting over-the-air updates as a feature yeah. that we oh you're this, gonna get it often <laughs> right right you got it you got it which do is good the, the cap tip to tesla yeah you got it i have a model y i full disclosure i drive a model y and um mm -hmm. and i had a model three before that and i that's one of the things that i actually like the most about the cars it's constantly being updated and so to see that come to other evs and to see that, uh, you know, just basically become a, a standard in the automotive industry is a good thing for everybody. I mean, it is the most frustrating thing in the world when you have a car and you want it to do a thing like, why won't my car ha connect to my new iPhone? And it's because your car's six years old, which isn't that old. And, right. uh, you know, and but it, but for whatever reason, like the the software is just not there. It's kind of like old smart TVs where it's just they, they just would ship and then you just never see updates like it's just terrible and it don't get updated. And then you stop using it because it just doesn't serve your purposes anymore. So. Um, so, yeah, this is really this is a great thing. And um, and they talked a lot about, uh, you know, cruise ultra cruise, which is this sort of hands free driving experience. That's and right. I think it's just a really Great thing, but this new uh, Silverado is very expensive. Um, the first version, the Founders Edition, whatever, what have you, is uh, is about a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So it is, yeah. it is not I'm, cheap. I'm delighted you're bringing this up because that was one of the immediate pieces of feedback that I saw scrolling in our chat rooms was that like, hey, th these this is tech that I'll never be able to afford, and it it is a little misleading when these companies announce these vehicles and they've got price tags behind them that are, they're saying just starting at just $30,000, which for a lot is an expensive car as the right. base model. But the moment you decide to have an extra cup holder or heaven forbid a heated seat, you're now looking at a hundred thousand dollar yeah. vehicle for something that you won't have to charge, you know, every it's 200 miles. 
Right, it is it's a lot. a lot. And 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 really, you know, that segment has been kind of like, you know, it's it's very it's moving in the same direction that uh we've seen electric vehicles move in the sedan space. So Tesla kicked it off with the, you know, the Model S and then it's like this luxury sedan, it's expensive and a lot of other automakers followed suit and now we're seeing kind of the same thing happening with trucks and you know as crossovers and so we're going to see that sort of trickle down over time so a few more years we'll probably see once battery tech hopefully gets a little bit less expensive um, because it's the battery pack that makes it pricey and so uh so yeah i think uh once we kind of see that come down a little bit we should hopefully start seeing finally the segment of cars that is i would imagine uh the the smallest profit margin for automakers which is the uh, sub thirty thousand segment um but i i don't know if it'll be right this second right so i you know i know tesla's working on something they they want to get mm-hmm. their you know next really inexpensive twenty five thousand dollar car but they said that the model the model three was going to be that car it was going to be you know right. under thirty thousand and then they completely dropped the uh super base model version of that car because it just they weren't making, they weren't going to make money off of it. So, yeah. well, there were, there were like be, two whole minutes where you could order that car on their you website could order it. and it was yeah, a, a like year out minutes. and it didn't have a steering wheel. So. But outside of that, you could get yeah. it for like two they, minutes they said, and they're like, nope. And then all of a sudden it was like, Elon Musk was like, I don't know that. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard of that car. Like, yeah. I don't know. Ha, 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 no, no, no. Never no, no, heard of here. it. Ha, ha. Like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I do, I do, I, but I do want to applaud the industry as a whole for going in this direction. Look, people love to, and this isn't what this discussion's about. And I apologize for even popping the, the lid to this <laughs> jar the of e, worms. The E, the E front. But like, yeah, but yeah, let me pop the e trunk on this pop one real quick to just say that like the numbers are mostly in, and unless you're cherry picking data for very specific vehicles and very specific models with very specific usage scenarios, on the whole, EVs, especially if you can reuse the battery packs for other things like leaf blowers, a lawnmowers, a little cyber truck ATVs, they are better for the environment and will be, especially as we transition to heaven forbid, solar or wind as a as a, yeah. a, a fuel yeah. of the future so I, I like for people that are like nope they're actually more damaging to the environment i think that's that's disingenuous we have to get to a commercial but i've got to show you the bmw color changing car so vanessa i defer to you what do we do do we show an hour do we do when we get back you tell me vanessa help Help us! Vanessa. We don't know what to do. Okay, she's gone. She's already helicopters. at commercial break. She's We're gonna go to commercial break. Again. Let's do it when we get back. Yeah. Okay, when we come back, <laughs> Vanessa has said it. We'll be right back. We'll show you the BMW color changing car, and then we're gonna play a CES game with Ashley. More from the loop right after this. Hello, my internet friends. It's me, Kevin Pereira, and you've stumbled somehow, miraculously, into Attack of the Show Presents The Loop. I'm joined by super producer Vanessa G, who's been collating and collecting your questions and comments all show long, exclamation point Q, if you want to ask them. And we're going to try to get to them very quickly at the end of this. But the guest today, the reason for the season, the delightful, the lovely, the very knowledgeable Ashley Escada, senior producer from CNET, joins us. And uh, Ashley, we got to talk about the color changing car. We got it. Please, we just gotta... I screamed when I saw it this morning. This is incredible. This is the BMW's so, iX. Yeah, this is. Uh, I is? mean, this is as we talk about things that may or may never be in our Stop driveways it. or our homes Stop or our it. lives. But look, yeah, oh, look at that. Yeah, like, it's a, yeah, that's the best thing I've ever seen. That's this is exactly and, why I love CES. That that right there. That's why I love CES right there. It's amazing. I, I agree. I would have thought, and there was no shortage of people on, on Twitter and on Reddit threads that were screaming fake. Look at the tape. The sky no, changes color at this frame. Order. It's real. It's basically, they they basically duct tape a bunch of Kindles to a BMW. <laughs> like, that's e <E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E
I have been going to CES since 2011. So, um, wow. you know, we didn't have one last year. So I guess I could just say 10 years. And then... Um, that's no, that's a yeah, great that's run nice. because I I want to dive a little yeah. deeper though because you know the the, the color okay. changing car made you full CES screech but I want to get back to the '90s and test your CES knowledge even though oh, you well, weren't necessarily you covering it then say, because I don't think I could have gotten a badge for it at that point. Nope, that's fine and it will not be required for the little game which we're about to play because okay. Ashley we are in fact about to play a little game. Okay. This one's real simple, Ashley. We're going to rifle through these because we do have some chat questions and comments to get to, okay. uh, and we want to do that. But the question uh, will be very simple. I, I need you to tell me if the product that I describe is in fact real or fake. It's that simple. And we're going to start off with something called Hit Clips, <laughs> a futuristic device from CES 1999 that allowed the user to play one minute diskette versions of popular songs in magical mono sound. Oh, you know, you know what? That sounds so insane and must be real. It must be real. Yeah, for the, for the for the adults in chat, Tiger <laughs> made it. It sold 30 million units plus and it was just little 60 second samples of songs that you could cart around. It was like a very Lord, limited mini disc. No. The Tiger Hit Clips. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's one for one. Ashley, you're crushing okay. it. What about okay. the Nintendo Chop Choppa? Now this was from fake. 1982. Well, Nintendo <laughs> that, was they were an obscure card game company at the time, but this was a next okay. generation kitchen peripheral that it was a cheerful robot, which would then go on to be the Rob robot design. But that's, well, maybe I'm leading, but Pretty good. it had, chop. it would chop, chop the vegetables for you and it flopped. And of course the rest is history when Nintendo pivoted to gaming. I think it's fake. It's gotta be, it's yeah, fake. Yeah, no, you had it right away. You had it right away. It's I don't fake. even know why I continued to try. Uh, Talking to a Nintendo oh, lore master here. Come on. How about uh, uh, something that was ahead of its time, a board game that let players experience what it would be like to have a cute boy call them on purpose. Utilizing advanced voice digitization technology shown off at CES 1990, the way to win was to correctly guess which of the 24 boys had a crush on you. This is real. This is real. And I know this is, I know this is real because I feel like I remember seeing a news segment on it on the TV. <laughs> That's right. It is real. It was the dream phone game. Dream phone. And, yeah. The um, dream phone yeah. game. It was always a crushing disappointment for me because none of the boys ever had a crush on me. I'd get to the end of the game. I'd read the manual twice. Never. They need to bring back dream phone and do a, they need to do a collab with dream daddy and like make the dream daddy <laughs> board game, but with the dream, dream phone dad technology. Dream daddy. Yeah. Yeah. I a hundred percent right there. We could announce it at this year's CES. No one will hold us accountable if it never comes out. No, it's just vaporware. Of course. Uh, what about the D-Link? After the stellar, stellar failure of his beautiful automobile, that it would be the DeLorean, uh, innovator and time traveler enabler, John DeLorean, seized on a new tech idea that premiered at CES. This would be in 1987. It was a network car phone where you could check stocks or check stocks. Or you can check stock prices and all that functionality for the low, low price of five ninety nine for the device and ninety nine dollars per month. The DeLorean D Link. Okay, I think this is real, but only because the eighties was all about stocks and cocaine. Like it feels <laughs> like it's real. <laughs> <laughs> the only, and I'm I'm sorry, Ashley. We got you on that one. No. Vanessa G. That came out of her noggin. Vanessa, well I mean, played. I, that's why I went to that, that feels one last, like a real. That feels know. like a real product. Well, look, when you got when you have DeLorean involved, and as you said, the 80s were a very snow-fueled time where stocks were everything were buy, sell, buy, sell. It was a very <laughs> special time. When I was reading that, I was like, why is that in red? I, that totally looks like a real product for sure. That's, yeah. Um, wow. That was just I'm game. shocked that's not real. Uh, Truly shocked. Me too. Um, and we could make it. We could bring back the suitcase cell phone that you stuff in a car and all it does is manage your crypto portfolio for you. Let's you know exactly how things are going. Or maybe it just tracks. Maybe it's just only tracks GME and, uh, and AMC stock. Yeah, That's only all stonks. you get. It's for the, stonks only. only. The stonks. D stonks. D stonks. <laughs> we have, we did it. We did it we guys. Did it. We figured we it out. The code. All right, uh, all show long, you all have been using exclamation point Q to fire off your questions and your comments. Vanessa has been coalescing them 
uh, and I'm checking the clock because I think we have time to rifle through one or two of them. You'll correct me if I'm wrong, but Vanessa, yep. please. We've got some time. Uh, and this first one makes it especially interesting considering today's scenario. Uh, Joey in Space wants to know, think we'll see anything particularly interesting or innovative work at home tech, such as webcams, mics, lighting this year? Ah. Uh, you know, I, I saw... there was a webcam that was very interesting. I forget the name of it, though, because I'm terrible... And this <laughs> pandemic has turned my brain into scrambled eggs. And CES well, actually makes it worse. Somewhere in that brain fog of war, do you recall what the webcam did? I saw one that was shown off by, uh, I think it was Logitech, actually. But even they were saying that these are just prototypes. But the idea was it was a webcam that could attach to your monitor and I guess inductively charge or something. And then when you wanted to, you could pluck it off your monitor and then go and put it like on a whiteboard or take it around your house and put it on your refrigerator to oh, that's continue your weird. conversation wow. while you cook or whatever. Yeah, but it was just a very simple portable webcam concept. But I don't know if that's this the one that you This was something a little different. To. It was, and, it, and it's not a company, it's not a company that you would, it's not like a company we're all familiar with. It's not a company we're all familiar with. And now, like I said, I'm forgetting and it makes me, I'm furious at myself for forgetting this. Um, but it's a- uh, Did it have a, special technology that would like a, a scent packet that would uh, waft the I, smell of black licorice when a certain loved one called I mean, or- That did feels it, like it would be really nice. Like, can we just <laughs> like figure out smell-o-vision, but only good smells. That's like all I care about. If we're going to do smell-o-vision, it should only be good smells. Yes, that's what yeah, I, it should that's smell my, like a cracked leather back seat of my one star Uber always because that's so comforting to me. It lets me know that I'm <laughs> I'm headed to yeah, or from it. a CES. Oh, yeah. no. Uh, Vanessa, any other cues? Yeah. From Soul Searcher, is there any niche tech that you use regularly that more people should be aware of? Ooh, mm, I, any niche tech. I'm happy to leap in on that one while you think if you want. Yeah, Ashley. go ahead. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, hashtag, not an ad, but I have a portable, uh, I don't want to say vaporizer because it sounds like, ah, oh, sick, bro, I'm vaping the juice. It's actually uh, for sinus clearing and it's a portable steamer. I believe it's <gasps> the Sinia Cleanse is the company that makes it. And they had a model like a year or two ago that would just break if you looked at it wrong. The new model, which I just got, so far, uh, knock on webcam, is working just fine. And it is, you filled it with distilled water, you press a button, instantly you have hot steam coming out of a, a surgical grade uh, mask that you can put around Whoa. your uh, your mouth and nose and just inhale sweet steam. And if you're someone like me that has a lot of sinus issues and lives in Los Angeles where just casually walking around, you're filled with particulate, um, yeah. it's a great thing. If you feel a cold coming on, uh, if you're just a little congested in the morning, a little portable battery powered device, it's not like the sexiest thing, but it really has changed my health game quite a bit. So I really, really like it. I think that counts. I immediately looked this up. I immediately That's, looked this up. I cannot think of something better for my constantly swollen sinuses than this. Uh, That's um, terribly fascinating. Yeah. I think it's called Sinia Cleanse, right? I think so. I think they make Sinia it. There's, there's. Is it Sinia? No, it's not Sinia Cleanse. I'm going to shout. I'm going to, I'm going to do the most unprofessional cleanse. thing ever. Hey, April. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What is that sinus device that I have on the counter? <laughs> what's, it, what's it called? I mean, right, this, this is, is a, this is it. Ah, that's it. That's it. I'm right sorry. It's not the side right It's my pure mist. My, my pure, pure mist. mist. That's okay, hashtag, I not an it. ad. An anime. I got the, the webcam. <laughs> I figured it out. Oh, what's the webcam? It's called the Opal C1. This is like a 4K webcam designed to rival. Oh, Here's yeah. the little, little photo. So it's it, it's made to to rival your like a uh, DSLR camera or something DSLR cameras yeah and it's like three hundred bucks it's supposed to be like three hundred bucks so that's oh, the uh, that's that really op nice. Opal C one is the and it, but it wasn't announced at CES I see like I said time very strange no but that's no, that's strange. a really cool piece of tech and look if you're someone like me who is a streaming professional and cares so deeply about every pixel that ends up I, on their, I know. their stream. I mean, look at, uh, look at that. I just shoved <laughs> everything. I was like cleaning up after a child. I just shoved all the stuff into the corner. I'm really professional, but that is a gorgeous looking webcam. Um, and an awesome. Yeah. Piece of and technology. it's supposedly very amazing. So I like, you know, instead of spending, you know, 1600 bucks for a mirrorless with a decent lens, like it seems like this might be a good, might be a good option if you're a, a streamer or, 
Sorry, my, my microphone has gone insane today. I don't know what the problem is, so I apologize for my sound. I'm, I am okay. riding yeah. this. I'm riding this mixer like a like a racehorse right now. Like it's just, I'm gonna just put it back up. You're just in the booth. I love that you're mixing those ones and twos, but we appreciate just you doing right it there. for the stream. Thank you so much. And then, do we have a we have a we have a promo pony to ride? Do we have the promo pony? We have. A Does promo it exist? Pony. We brought in a virtual environment. Pony. Hold on, on. I, we should have. We probably should have briefed Ashley on this that we have a you pony. Have a that horse. Exists. Have it. That's our baby. That's Can I just baby. say the, mu- the music is runs, what I makes it? How bad it is. Yeah. Thank you, Ashley. The <laughs> music time. is what makes it really. <laughs> least, that was really. That was so special. I'll never forget uh, it. At least one person Truly. in chat said, run it again. Uh, I also want to point out, I just see someone saying my pure mist has bad reviews on Amazon, like a lot. Yes, they do. I've had one of their devices and it broke. And again, like I said, the older model, which I also had broke. If you just looked at it the wrong way, the new one that I have thus far has been working just fine. And it keeps me nice and nice and clean and happy and good. So your mileage may vary. They don't sponsor the show or me. I'm just saying it's something that I use. Okay. Enough of that promo pony half galloped by the stream i'm gonna shut up now ashley please promo all of the things it could be your things a friend's things whatever you want to raise awareness for okay so this is literally my favorite i'm like a really big av nerd i love all things av obviously uh and um these lights are like my favorite thing and they've been out for a while so but if you didn't know about them i'm gonna tell you right now so these are called aperture mc lights and they're these little tiny uh LED lights and I'm using them right now. I have, I have a few of them. Um, but the cool thing about these is that not only do they just do your standard, uh, white light, they also will go full RGB. Um, so you can use them for mood lighting. You can use them for, you know, like you can use them for anything. And, um, they also are magnetic. So you can just put it wherever, wherever you want. So oh, you can, what it's a pretty cool. Satisfying little thunk that was. What, what was the model? Was that the MC? It's called MC. It's an MC light, and it's aperture A P A P U T U R E. So it's a yeah, little I'm, little different than Aperture Labs from Portal, like uh, Zeroz is saying and <laughs> right. on Twitch chat. Um, but they're really nice, and uh, and they they're like like I said, they're like ninety bucks each. Um, and then they also have these like uh, these really cool road cases if you buy them in like larger kits um so you can get like i think it's four or 12 um of them and they will charge they they're chi charging as well so they just wirelessly charge you don't you can just put them on a cool. on a pad which is pretty pretty awesome so uh i really like them and they're pr- probably one of the most versatile pieces of production technology i have so i i can't i can't speak highly of them enough i i really that appreciate is- them that is an ultra hot tip, Ashley. And I'm looking at the charging case that you were talking about, how cool that you can store so many it's of those amazing. in one little case. And then it charges in the case yeah. itself. That is, You just okay. plug the case into the wall and then everything charges wirelessly. You can even charge your phone on the Qi chargers in the cases, which is like amazing. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite pieces of production equipment and um, when- so versatile and you could use it for anything. And they also have a, they have like an app that comes with it where you can do like, ambient lighting because it's meant for you know producing short films and movies and tv shows and everything so you can actually use these and you can do things like uh fireworks effects in the app and so it'll make it look like off camera like fireworks are going off like with the lighting that is so, so cool. it's, oh, so it's it pretty kind of awesome it's its own little mesh network so all the lights are synced up and can all talk you can to each sync other up all the lights mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah you can set up like profiles for all of them and everything like that so it's it's i really like them i they're That's they're really cool. truly one of my favorite pieces of production equipment when i get around to updating my streaming setup in 2027 i'm absolutely it's going to happen. grab like three or four of these for sure. And that was, by the way, the sweetest promo pony ever. I would love for you, Ashley, to promote your stuff as well so the folks that are watching can seek you out and, uh, yeah. and follow you and engage with all of the media, social and otherwise. I, I am ha- I am happy to give you that information uh, to anyone yes. who cares. Um, and so I'm, sh- I'm sure there are threes of you out there. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Ashley Esketha. I'm at my name. Um, I'm on Twitter pretty much constantly. Please don't judge me. 
And uh, and then also I have videos that go up on CNET's YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash CNET. And uh, my most recent one, which I think either is live now or will be live shortly, is that interview with the CEO of Moon Bikes, where they talk about all the different aspects of the moon bike and uh, why it's so cool and why anybody who has to ride around in the snow should get one. So it's, uh, it's really fun. Appreciate it, Ashley. Thank you so much for taking the time in the, the busiest week of the year. The Super Bowl for nerds, as some like to say, but uh, appreciate the insight and those, those picks. And then Vanessa G, we have the graphic, Dare to Dream. We want to roll that promo pony one more time and tell people where they Let's can find you and follow pony, all your goodness. Roll that promo Let's get that pony. horse going. One more time. Get, it, get that horse out of this the promo table. pony. There he is. I love him so much. I really thought my facial hair would be the most embarrassing thing on the stream today, but nope. it's a close. It's a neck and neck <laughs> oh, race. We're going to have to do the photo finish. The graphics. Does the uh, pony right. have a name? Not just promo pony for it's now? Just promo pony okay. for right now. Yeah, okay. yeah. If you want to yeah. write the lore, we can make it canon, Ashley, if you want to yeah. invest the time. All right. you, I'm, I'm thrilled don't. Look, I could write a backstory. Saying, <laughs> please send them to me. Son of Sea Biscuit. Continue our conversation <laughs> about how the Palm Pilot is an underrated uh, piece oh. of cell phone technology. Yeah. Vanessa ah. and I are going to. Vanessa and I are uh, kicking off our Palm Pre um, fan club, which is <laughs> launching yep. a few years too late. But um, uh, but also it's okay very good, that. and there will be a, two of us. Yeah. Exactly. I was a I like the trio, and I was also an iPack uh, an iPack bro I for also, a minute there. So I I'm, the I'm with you. I'm with you. If you want to tell me all about how much you loved your Palm Pre or argue with me about it, please don't. Uh, but I'm under come to uh, me N E S S Guerrero on Twitter, and then also come to Ashley and she'll she'll fight you on why the Palm Pre was actually yeah. ahead of its time. <laughs> so just beyond you. prescient. Yeah. Uh, you both are uh, 10 kinds of delightful and I do sincerely appreciate you taking the time to chat with us and all of the wonderful viewers. So thank you both very much for rounding up all that is CES uh, and more and for indulging in some of those detours. Uh, dearest <laughs> viewers, thank you for showing up. Thank you for clicking like, for subscribing, for following, for uh, chatting, for gifting some subs. I, I saw that happen today as well after the train and I apologize. I lost the name of of uh, the delightful soul that did it. But thank you for all of that support because it does mean a lot. Yes, there's parent companies involved, but this is a game of inches, as you know, in the streaming world. So we do appreciate every ounce of engagement and love. Um, join us over on the G4 TV Discord. We have wonderful mods on all platforms and maybe some of our chat mods will be spamming that link right now. But we love it when the Discord community grows. We got a bunch of silly imagery of me over there. So if that doesn't bring you to the party, I understand. We have imagery of the better hosts <laughs> as well. So come Sign, on over to the Discord right and now. hang out. Thank you. <laughs> Sincerest thanks to all of you for watching. Thanks to our amazing crew for putting this on. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. We got a live attack of the show in the studio. Corona be darned. We will be there with plenty of show for you. It's a three ring circus. So join us 4 p.m. Pacific. In the meantime, kisses, hugs, and belly rubs. Goodbye, everyone.